Hello, Miss Princess Casserole here, and I am here with another jewelry education video. Um, this time we are going to look at different chains and the names of them. Um, I am going to probably do this in at least two parts um, because there's a lot of different chain styles and this isn't even all of them um, but I do have examples of all of them and wanted to review them with you guys because I am still somewhat learning and I forget the names of these chains as well and I find some of the names kind of fascinating and that there are so many different variations of different chain styles so I hope you guys will enjoy and learn a little something with you with me and if you guys have any other information please look it in the comments below I would very much appreciate it as I know we all love learning together so let's get into this the first chain we are going to talk about is this one. Um, I have this lovely long chain and I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorites. As you can see, these are little interlocking round chains. This is, as I think you'll find oftentimes, there are more than one names for different chain types. There are two names for this one. This is called a Belcher chain, B-E-L-C-H-E-R, or um, what you guys probably know it as, what I've known it as, is a Rolo chain. Um, I found it kind of interesting when I was doing some research that it says the Belcher chain originated in Britain in the 18th century and was named for the bare-knuckle bare boxer Jen, Jem? J-E-M, <laughs> that's a great name, Belcher, who was champion of all England from 1800 to 1805. The jewelry chain is similar in style to Trace Chain, but rather than having uniform lengths, they are wider than they are thick. So, okay, if that makes sense. Um, in its finest form, finest being small, it is known as the Baby Belcher Chain. This chain is also known as Rolo Chain. So I thought that was really interesting um, information. And this, I think, is um, one of those chain styles everybody should have in their collection. It's great for layering. And pretty much any pendant looks nice on this one, especially since it is kind of like a bigger chain and kind of a classic style um this is one i would recommend everybody having one of so the next one is the ball chain ball chain is composed of spheres of metal rather than open links so the last one the rollo chain you tell that one was open links this one is spheres of of metal um this one in particular is solid spheres um, but they can also be hollow as well they can be fixed at regular intervals along the length of the chain with connector bars which you can see this one is um or placed immediately adjacent to each other i almost always see them like this the jewelry chain this jewelry chain typically has its own snap fastener with the larger steel versions of this chain more often used to hold holder id cards than for jewelry um, this one uh, actually came this way because it's an art piece and i just i really like that one this one is not the typical ball chain um, you can find these that are sterling silver a lot of times they are made with uh, stainless steel though this type of jewelry making chain is also known as a bead chain and paline chain, P-E-L-L-I-N-E -E chain. That's a new one. I need to uh, do some shining on this, just a tiny bit right here though, because I like it a little bit dark because I think it goes with the pendant on this one. Um, I think this one is nice for more like heavy modernist 
um, if you have sterling silver, um, I would put it with like a brutalist pendant because I just, I think the industrialness of this chain pairs well with that. But you can also do the leather and lace type thing where you put it together with something really feminine and girly and pretty too, to, to do that hard and soft thing. Um, it's funny because I'm sure this, this chain has been around for a long time, but I remember when it became popular when I was younger, I was probably in middle school perhaps, and people were wearing their like sink plug as the chains, um, or at least my uncle said that he did with the, you know, the stopper in your bathtub, because most of the time those chains are made with this. So it's just kind of a funny thing because it always reminds me of like a sink or a bath stopper chain. But like I said, because of that, I think it pairs well for Brutalist or even the mix of industrial and sweet so I do sometimes put those together so this is a very classic chain that I have a few of and they do come in sterling silver like I said normally I'll find them in stainless steel which is another good option stainless steel jewelry is becoming very popular because it doesn't tarnish and that's a plus I think so this one is a ball chain or a bead chain. So this one I thought was really interesting. I've always known this by uh, the term Byzantine chain, but I'm gonna read you some other descriptions and we'll also go to that as well because learning, it's fun. Uh, bird cage chain, bird cage chain, that's one of the names for this apparently, I did not know that, is an intricate, closely linked sequential chain design which has or ancient or origins dating back to the 5th century. Made of either oval or round links, the resulting chain is very soft and flexible with elegant, elegant drape. So, yeah, which is nice because I'd never really noticed that, but yeah, it's very fluid and flexible and comfortable and feels great. The links are used in pairs with a vertical pair joined by a horizontal pair to a vertical pair. The final pair in the sequence is unfolded back past the middle section with the middle section then opened upwards and downwards to both lock the folded pair back in place as well as opening up an anchor port point for the next sequence of three paired links. The result is a jewelry chain with a very detailed rope-like appearance and texture. It is available in both flat and round styles. This one is flat, even though it's not actually super flat as you can see, but it, it is flat in the way that it's, it's not rounded. Um, as well as graduated form, with the chain with becoming larger towards the center of a necklace, for example. So I have one like that as well, where these are a lot longer than they are on the edges where the clasp is. Because of its early origins, it is known by many other names, including Byzantine chain, Idiot's Delight chain, and King's Braid chain. How interesting is that? Let's see what it says, if there's anything. Yeah, there's no other information there. But again, this I've always known as Byzantine chains. Probably if I was listing it, what I would list it as. But it's also no, nice to know that there's these other names in there. If you guys are resellers or you're searching for something as well, it's always nice to have all of the uh, names that something can be known by so that you can find things where other people maybe cannot. So interestingly enough, bird cage, bird cage chain, Byzantine chain, Indian's delight chain, and King's braid chain is what this one is known known as. Um, normally, I don't see these 
with any pendants or anything. Um, they're usually just worn by themselves. Uh, but they are nice for layering with other things or wearing by itself. As you can see, this is kind of something you can do either way and it would work out perfectly. So it's got a very hard look. Um, and again, so I would probably pair it with some soft, other soft things or pair it with other things just to make it look really cool like Janet Jackson in the 80s with all her chains. Um, so that is the Byzantine chain. This is a, another chain. It is called a Cobra chain, which I don't think I knew that. Um, is a basic cable chain. So obviously some of these chains are part of a wider, um, bigger classification, which this one is part of the cable chain classification that has been hammered or swagged into a chain with flat triangular links, which I do like this one, except for, um, I find sometimes this chain can get caught in my hair. <laughs> um, so I don't always, it's not always the first one I grab. So you can see the V's and why it's probably called the Cobra chain, um, with the triangles that are set together. Um, so it's a unique, unique look. I don't normally see these being worn with pendants. Uh, sometimes this one's a really long, it's not sterling silver or anything. So it's just a, a long chain that can be kind of used with anything. And yeah, so that's the Cobra chain. <laughs> so this is a very popular style of chain. This is the Figaro. Figaro chain. Um, Figaro is similar to curb chain in that it has flattened twisted links, but it does not have one uniform link size or shape. Typically it will have between one and five shorter links. This one has three, um, alternating between a longer link, which is this one. Creating an attractive repeating pattern for the length of the chain. This type of jewelry chain originated in Italy and is named after the popular Italian opera, The Marriage of Figaro. So I think this is, this is, um, one, I do wear this with, with, um, pendants. I know this one's a popular unisex chain. So this is one that you see often on men or on women or anywhere in between um and i often also see this one with crosses or something that's kind of you know more of a hard pendant again i do the same thing either i will use this with something that's kind of modernist too as you can see that would be nice with it or i'll do the the fancy thing and put um something sweet and feminine with it or I will use it when I am layering up. I will use this to break up my layers and just as an addition to my layers because I, I do like to layer if I can in odd numbers. So, you know, three, five, five is a little much, but um, sometimes I do too. If I have something like this and another one, it can look fine too. Um, but this one is the Figaro chain. So now we are on this one. This is called a French rope chain. It's made from machine flattened wire with each wire link roven into the next without the benefit of solder very interesting so it's not soldered in between um, but this is a very complicated design you can see how many um, pieces are in there I love this this is probably one of the most versatile chains I think in that you can wear it alone or with a pendant and it looks amazing either way 
So this is a very classic style. Again, if we're talking about you just want to start with uh, five chains styles, just so that you have a couple pendants, you have a couple chains that you can um, move in and out of those. This is one that I would definitely recommend. It is super classic. So this one, and you can see it does does some for some reason sometimes get stuck in if you're leaving it on felt or something like that um you can even hear it it's almost like velcro something to be aware of um but i don't think this one ever gets stuck in my hair so there's that too <laughs> mesh chain has a fabric like quality with very fine wire used to weave the chain there are a number of production methods including Milanese mesh chain and stocking mesh chain. The first is produced by weaving wire into tubular or flat profiles, whilst the second is produced using a knitting process with needles generating a continuous and seamless tube of mesh chain in the same way stockings used to be made. That's so cool. These chains tend to be wider than normal jewelry chains, often being four or more links wide which you can see this one is pretty much a lot thicker than the normal chains that you would see even if here it the french rope it's a lot smaller um these look really nice with any kind of artistic pendants i may have um i don't tend to wear this by itself I do tend to put pendants on, on this one just because, it, I don't know, personally I don't think it stands out as much as like a Figaro chain or a Byzantine chain. I also wouldn't wear a ball chain by itself, so this is one of those ones that I would not wear by itself. Um, but it's a really neat chain style and i would say if you already have your five classic chains and you want to add some more dimension into your chain collection this is one i would recommend uh just to have something so you can break it up and have something some different texture with your layering so here is another one i know this one's pretty hard to see so that's is as I can get it but I think hopefully you guys can can see so this is a popcorn chain which I never knew what this one was called before it is super duper flexible probably one of the more flexible it is made of identical machine stamped segments of flat metal in the same manner as a snake chain the metal segments are hollow and can be flat rounded or concave. I really like this one. See, I have this one paired with, with this. It's kind of that hard and soft thing for me. Um, this one I would say is not like one that top five you have to have it. But if you have a whole bunch of regular chains, it is one that I would say go out and buy one because it's different. If you have stuff that is made to be oxidized, usually these popcorn chains that I find are very oxidized. They have that like Bali look to them where it's it's nice and silvery but also oxidized inside so it looks really nice with anything you know that has on purpose oxidation um so it is a good choice for things like that or to break up and this is a way different texture than some of the other more popular chains. So this one is a popcorn chain if you guys are looking to add to your collection and you want to find something cool and different. So this is definitely a classic, right? Again, if you're doing top five chains, you have to have one of these. Either um, it's nice and sterling silver, you can do stainless steel. This comes in gold. In the gold one, it's going to be expensive. Um, I do have one gold Omega chain and it's 
very beautiful. Um, but honestly, if you have a nice shiny sterling Omega chain, it's kind of hard to tell the difference for the normal person if you're walking down the street that you're wearing, like, you know, super expensive gold Omega chain or a sterling silver one. But Omega chain is a wide chain, so you can tell it is, and they come in different, different lengths. So it's, sometimes it's a show stealer and sometimes it's something that you could add. Um, you can wear pendants with the Omega chain, but be careful because I have seen beautiful Omega chains get kinked because somebody was wearing a really heavy pendant with this chain style. So I would not recommend that personally. Um, so it's a wide chain distinguished from other chains by the structure of its links or plates. Small individual metal plates are aligned next to one another and crimped to an underlying mesh substructure, which is really cool. So you can't see it because it's underneath, but you can kind of see where each of these links is cut and has a line. And so when you have a problem with your Omega chain, that's when you, you see it, the mesh underneath. Um, or sometimes if these aren't cut flush like this one is, this one's like a really nice one and it's cut perfectly and put on here perfectly, um, you'll be able to sometimes see the, the mesh underneath. This type of chain is popular for its overall strength and its reflective qualities, which, yes, showstopper. Very, very, that's why I say with uh, sterling silver or gold, they are just, you can wear just an Omega chain and look perfectly elegant. Um, the chain's texture, chain's texture makes it extremely shiny, which yes, you can, you can see that it's probably one of the shiniest ones that I have shown you guys. The chain design is traditionally flat in profile, although rounded variations of the chain can be found. I almost always find it in the rounded, um, instead of the flat. kind of see it. The chain design is traditionally flat in profile, although rounded variations of the chain can be found. They can also be reversible. Um, you would not wear this one re on the reverse, I don't think. I guess you could. It is beautiful and you probably could wear it either way, but you can kind of see how it's convex on this side. Beautiful chain. Again, I don't normally like to wear this one with a pendant just because it can kink and it's so nice on its own and it's a nice addition. If you have two other necklaces on there and you put this one on there, um, either this or uh, what we'll go over another time, a herringbone chain can be very nice to kind of cut that pattern and do different textures. So it's very nice. Um, so this one is the Omega chain. Again, if you're talking top five chains and you want to get something that is classic, elegant, timeless, it's on my list. So this is actually also an Omega chain. Uh, Omega chain is a solid style chain popular for its strength and shiny look. Um, it is made of individual metal plates aligned next to one another and crimped to an underlying mesh base. There are flat and rounded versions of this type of chain. So, you can kind of see what this one looks like. It is heavy. This is a heavy chain and you can kind of also see how it compares to the flat version of the Omega chain. I personally actually did not know that these came in both, um, but now that I'm looking at it, 
I can definitely see the resemblance and how they're both beautiful, well-made chains. Um, so, just so you guys can get a good look at this one. Hopefully you guys can see it very well, but this is an Omega chain. Both of these are Omega chains. This is just the flat version and this is the round version. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on chain styles. Please join me for part two very soon. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Please also look into joining my channel. And I will see you guys in part two of this video. Bye, guys.